What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matchmaker Amber Neal. We are live in studio for Thirsty Thursdays. We're here to help all you singles out there because it's hard for a pimp when you're trying to find love in mm-hmm. H-Town. It is so hard. Yes, it is. Let me go ahead and welcome in my co-host with the most and our special guest today. Y'all welcome into the studio, Hugging Bear, the bear on air, Eric Davis. Hello. Everybody, it is great to be here. And in studio today, oh my gosh, this guy and I have been friends since gosh, almost 10 years now. It's been a long yeah. time. We tried to launch a dating service back in 2013. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why we think it was not successful. You know, that's the one thing you got to be willing to do in life, especially if you're in the public, you know, it, public or not, you got to be willing to talk about the failures that are part of success. So we're going to talk about that. But y'all welcome into the show, my really sweet friend, hilarious. Oh, my gosh. And don't come for him because you will get roasted. Y'all welcome in my friend, Jason Sims. <laughs> Hey, you guys, Jason here. Yay, I'll give you the whole applause. Oh, yeah. Because it, like, the thing is, it just kind of cuts off if you don't. Um, yeah, so... Tell them to stop clapping. I just won't stop clapping for you. <laughs> so, like Amber said, we've been friends for quite a while. We tried to launch a business, um, but it just really didn't take off. But... We come back and make each other's lives for a reason. Yes. Don't you think it's so funny? Because I thought it was a really cute name. Love Tangle. You know, because that's, you know, now now you flash forward 10 years later and you have the word, in uh, what is it? Um, not entrapment. What is it? Entanglement. Entang- that's what we should have called it. That, yeah. Enta- <laughs> I'm in an entanglement. It, I, it's an entanglement. So it just sort of. Yeah, that, that, yeah, better than love table. 
better than love tangle because that's what it is a lot of the times it really is a it's an entanglement you know because now in a culture where everybody's just kind of like hooking up and nobody's really thinking about love as much and people are getting to a place where they don't even believe in marriage anymore the most recent bing, 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 bing. <laughs> We are spotlight single today, so you have no choice. Pull your mic. Turn they can't hear your mic. Yeah, okay. just, pull, just pull the arm out. And, yeah, you can just pull it towards you. You're good. Okay. Let me turn you up a little bit. Give you a little Let's bit more see. volume That's here. That's better? Can you... Let me see. How's that? Yeah, keep talking. Is that better now? Yeah, you just, their okay. direction. You just got to talk right into it because they're, like, they're kind of weak. But, um, but, you know, it's funny, Jason, because I saw a study recently that said 51% of millennials still believe in marriage. But 49 don't. Mm. So we're kind of like at that like really dangerous place as like as far as the Institute of Marriage goes. Because, you know, one thing that we, we you and I tried to launch the first LGBTQ dating service in Houston and it failed. Like we were at the F bar every weekend trying to promote. Yeah. And what do you think? What do you think happened? What do you think went wrong? Like I, would, I just feel like we weren't accepted. Uh, it's not that not being accepted our community is so small you really i mean it just sort of happens you you we all know each other so it's not like you can just it's not like with straight people they can go out and to matchmaking events and we know each other we all hang out in the same small area and so it just it's when it, it yeah that's it's like, I don't need any help because we all know each other. Right, right. Okay. Well, I mean, that makes sense. But we, we did try because, well, you know, everybody wants love. And I know that back, when was it legal in Houston for uh, people to get married? I don't remember. Uh, I don't like, remember. Like, I remember Anise Parker and her wife got married. Yeah. But that was like, God, I don't even remember when that was. Because I think Sylvester's on his second term now. So that was like, it was probably like eight years ago or so. Yeah. So it's been legal for a while. I don't, um, it, it, I don't remember yesterday. It, it doesn't <laughs> matter to me because I don't think I'll ever get married. So Why do you think that? Like, what, what, what has, what has always been your relationship goal and what is it now? Like, what's changed over the last, you know, five to six years? Now more than anything, I'm a lot to take on. <laughs> <laughs> Are we all? Oh my gosh. We all have different baggage, but you know, we all, we definitely all come with baggage for sure. Oh, I, I tell everybody now, I'm a lot to take on, but you get benefits and privileges. I, <laughs> princess parking, we get access to a lot of things first. And yes, I'm trying to just make sure your sound is on. Talk a little more. Okay, okay. Is that it's kind of loud. It's kind of echoey. Okay. Okay. Test for me. Okay. Keep talking. Is this any better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's so weird. Okay. I think it's just that mic. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see. I'm just getting the feedback. Hey, move his mic. Yeah, it's in front of us. Our music director, DJ Houston. <laughs> He's not here today. We wish him the best. He's out of town, but he will be back in studio with us uh, Monday. And so we're just testing the mics, but he was just saying he couldn't hear, you can't hear him. Okay, that's so weird, I don't know, like the mics are all the way up, so I don't know, let me see what's going on with your mic. Hello, can you hear me now? It, it is Test, kind of, test. Like the other it mics sound, are working it better. It sounds different. Let's get you around to this mic because, um, test, test. I think it's that mic, I think it's just that mic. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, he can just come around, that's fine. All right, so we are, uh, I'm telling we're moving, moving his mic. Okay, I'm moving your mic. All right, so cuz, we're going to jump into the topic today. Let me go ahead and pull those up. You know, because we love to break it down in relationships, and we like to help people find love. The hotlines are open, 832-743-JAMS. We're in studio today with my very special friend, Jason Sims. He's our Spotlight Single of the Week. He will be back in studio next week to join us as well. Our show got started today due to accident on the freeway, so... We're going to bring him back in so we can have the whole two hours uh, that we want to have with you, Jason. So what do you think about, what do you think is, what do you think, why do you think millennials are, are getting jaded toward marriage? Do you think it's just that people have seen so many other people go through divorce that they just don't believe it anymore? I mean, because 
we're now in a culture where men and women all have side pieces. Like, you know, it used to be, it used, just used to be a thing guys would really do. But now I notice even women do that. What do you think? What do you think's going on with your, what's your analysis of the dating scene right now? Right now during COVID, what dating scene? I know, right? You either had your quarantine fling, mm-hmm. and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't have it before, you, you ain't going to be able to really go out and meet anybody. So. Yeah. I know, because the bars are shutting back down. The restaurants are back down to 50. So it's kind of like, where do you go to actually meet somebody? And the thing is, is that, did you hear that Tinder was suggesting that people do... Uh, let me see who this is. 95.3 Jams. Uh-oh. I couldn't, I couldn't see. Wait. <laughs> it's DJ Houston. Hey. Uh, I may not be able to be there, but I can call in. <laughs> we got you on the air, boo. Hello. I'm so glad you called in. Hey. The DJ on the air. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So sad I couldn't be there today, but you know. So, Jason, I got a question for you. Yes, uh. sir. Do you feel like in the dating world, especially in the gay dating world, do you feel like Grinder has really taken a toll on relationships? Ooh, good question. Yeah, that's yeah, most definitely. What's grinder? <laughs> I've heard of grinding. But what is grinder? So you know what Tinder? You know what Tinder is? Grinder, don't play. <laughs> so you well, y'all gotta tell me how to do it before I can go out and try it out. How do you no, grinder? No, you don't. So, <laughs> that's not one for you. Eric. Yeah, it yeah. might be. You know, oh. it might be. Oh, it was a ploy to turn me. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Y'all, you're just y'all are just trying to turn me out. Again. I'm trying to turn DJ Houston, and you're trying to, and he's trying to turn you. So like, <laughs> no wonder our show is so successful. <laughs> Dad, gum it. So, Jason, have you had good experiences with it or bad experiences with it? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then he uh, said yes. <laughs> yes. That's, I love it. it. I mean, it's just. So yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I, I, I really think that it has. Put I know from personal experience, I've had both. Both has been horrible. So yeah, I've had okay. some that lasted a, a while. What, which one? Is it while over um, I, like, a night or a week, yeah, a month, a year? What's the difference between grinder and Tinder? And yeah. grinding. Uh, we know what grinding is. Well, grinder specifically for gays and Tinder goes both ways. I feel like Tinder's more... It, it, I, I feel like Tinder's more for when you're trying to date and grinders for more when you're just trying to hook up. Uh, so oh really? Is like, Tinder is a dating thing. I think I thought Tinder was like a hookup. I, mean, I thought Tinder was just I, I for hooking up. I feel like in the gay world, I, I was yeah. like, I don't know about the straight world. I mean, I mean, I, I got a Tinder wrong, too. Like, I have a <laughs> Tinder too. So, right. Uh, what do you think is better, Tinder or Grinder? Uh, or neither. Are you over online dating? Or is there one that you like more than all? all? I mean, I use Grinder when I need something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Well, you know, Jason, I look forward to talking to you next week in the studio uh, when I get back in. But I'm on the road right now, so I'm going to go. But y'all guys enjoy the show. I miss y'all. Hey, and DJ Houston. Week, Jason. We'll, Be we'll safe. We soon. love you. We miss you. It's DJ Houston. You. We see you later. My air horn's not working. Oh, it doesn't like that. Bye. Bye, sweetie. Thanks for calling in. I just wave like you could see me. You never know. He might be able to on her thing. That's hilarious. That lights on, oh, oh yeah. He's see. probably watching. Oh. Hey. Yeah, because, you know, it's very frustrating when you, I mean, it's already hard enough for straight singles to find love. I mean, honestly, because oh God, online dating, it was, was, I think in theory, online dating was a really great concept. Um, because the number one thing that I've learned as a matchmaker is that the number one appeal to the to 
hard to meet somebody, which is asinine to me because what is the point of living in a major city where you have almost 7 million people if you're not going to be open to location? Because I get it. It's frustrating. We all want that convenient drive. But the reality of it is, what if it's love? At the end of the day, won't one of you move? I mean, like, are you seriously going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to have love because you live oh, in no, Clear Lake? You got inner loopers. If you're outside of the 610 loop, we mm-mm, they, See? they don't know. At all. Yeah. Don't even try. The closer you get to the beltway uh-huh. and after. Mm-hmm. Oh, after the beltway. You drive. <laughs> you might as well be in space. Yeah, you, you mean you, even you if you're doing. willing to drive in, they, they're not interested? No. no. They're not going to drive out. You but, could drive in, but they're not going to drive out. But then that you just get tired of driving in. Yeah. And then yeah. not driving out. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's, it's hard. So I think the number one thing I've found as a matchmaker is that people really hate the geographic location. But I remember since online dating has been created, there's a whole new show called Catfish. It's, you know, I know y'all, y'all seen that on MTV. It's been out for years. Um, where they've made a whole show successfully on people lying to each other, pretending to be someone else, using someone else's image. And I even saw one where this one chick posed that she was a guy hoping the girl would fall in love with her. I'm like, why don't you, dude, you got to tell somebody up front if you're a man or a woman, they want to know. I mean, that's like a major, oh, I was hoping you were falling in love with my personality. Wouldn't you be pissed I mean, if you fell in love, you thought you thought it was a great guy and it was really a chick posing as a guy? Like when you, you, Then when you meet in person and it's like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah I mean, like, whose yeah, dick pic was that yeah, you sent me because. Where, where did that come from? <laughs> I mean, seriously, but the whole thing is, is catfish. What do you think? I, can't, I just can't even imagine somebody's, you know, reaching down there for a vage, and there's a schlong down there. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. How do they explain that? You, gotta, you don't. I how mean, do they explain that away? I mean, how could somebody want to be with somebody that was willing to lie like that? That, that And that's the real problem. It is, it's the lie of it. It's the deception of it. You're starting a relationship off on deception. That's it the problem just, I have. I can't yeah, even wrap my that, mind around that. That just I, I couldn't even imagine showing up thinking I'm talking <laughs> to some hot guy and show up and there's you. <laughs> I mean, I, are you reaching down there for a shot? I got half of it. I'm hot, but I am not a guy, you know? But then how do you, like... You know, uh, how, how do you, how do you like, um, well, what her husband was... There's a whole show. It's called Catfish. Catfish. It, I mean, I think it's on like God. It's, it's I heard of Catfish. I thought that was where they reach in there and they make That's they cat- put their arm down the throat and make a fist and pull the fish out. No, no, Catfish. Grappling. Is, catfishing I thought that is Catfish was about grappling. I'm like, is that a real thing? I don't know. I when you started it. saying they're putting their fist in something, you lost me that. Catfish. My mom went left. No, we're not talking about fisting, Eric. That's another <laughs> whole subject. <laughs> okay. So, so. There's this thing where people go in the water and they catch a catfish by putting their their arm down the like fish's in, throat. They make a fist and they pull the fish out. It's called grappling. A big, huge fish, like it's not fisting. It's grappling. <laughs> it's fisting no, fish, basically. Yes, fisting of a catfish is what it is. There must be some kind of sensation that you get when you do that. Or is it just a? Yeah, well, catfish yeah. have small teeth. They can scrape your arm up like like twenty grit or eighty grit sandpaper. No way. Yeah, they catfish have, small have teeth. teeth? It, itty yeah. bitty teeny ones like sandpaper, catfish, but they're that, the bigger they are, the bigger the teeth are. The show Catfish is on MTV, and oh well, that explains it. It, it yeah, you will see some stories on there. You're like, holy shit, like for real. What? How did y'all what fall for thinking? this? Yeah, like how did you fall for this? They never available on video. They're never available for a chat. All their pictures are dated, or they're like it's like, you know how like when people friend request you and you can go to their profile and it's like they have a profile picture and a cover picture and then it's like maybe one or two more pictures and then it's nothing. Like right. there's nothing on the profile. You know what I've been getting a lot of is these Bitcoin fed. What do they call it? Uh, I forgot. Anyway, that Bitcoin crap. Like I, yeah. I've been getting all these requests from all these oh, yeah. Bitcoin people. Yeah. F- FedEx. Not, that's not why FedEx. Something. That's why I keep my Instagram private. Because oh, do they, you? Yes, because I, I'll get on. I'll have like five new friend requests from these people. I'm Scammers. Like, I don't want y'all app on my friends list. Like, mm-mm. but you know what they're really doing that's really good right now. I, I mean, not good, but. Uh, crazy is uh it's good for them i guess is um i've been getting like they'll duplicate the whole thing like they'll duplicate somebody's whole profile and then create up another account for that 
There's been many times that somebody will friend request me, and then it's like, and they're like, hey, how are you doing? But if you you already know how your friend talks to you or don't talk to you, and it's like somebody that you hate, and all of a sudden they're inboxing you, hey, how's it going? You want to go, you know? And you're like, what? And then you go look, and it's like, it's a fake account. And I'm like, get, get a job. Like, 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 can you imagine some people's whole life is to scam people? Like, that's their whole thing. I can't imagine doing for it love, once, much less for a lifetime. For love, for relationships. Like, it's just crazy to me that people are, um, it's so sad. It's so It makes it so hard to find in the dating world between the married people, the players, the con artists. Like, how do you filter? But that's the thing, Jason. You're not going to find love on Grindr or Tinder, I don't believe. Especially when we know Grindr is hookup.com. Uh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I don't go in there looking for love in the first place. And that was, that was the whole point that we even started to try to start our dating service because there's not anywhere quality for singles in the community to go. The bars, that's... What... I mean, but that's a, that's a hookup culture too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're looking for love, where do you go? Hmm. The grocery store? To the to a unicorn farm, to a unicorn or a farm? pet store because animal Trader love Joe's. is unconditional. Oh, a pet yeah. store, that's Trader a good Joe's. idea. Animal love is unconditional. Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Ah, uh, really? it's it's known. Yeah, it's like the thing. Good. Which location? Really, right down the street. All of them the for heterosexuals too. I don't know. <laughs> Ones that, that are curious, that maybe. Ain't my cup of tea. Oh, there you go, trying to turn me out again. I'm not trying to turn you out. I'm just saying, like, don't deny. Even just making sure the option is there for me. You know, we're just, we're just trying to get the info for anybody that does want to meet sexy, sexy gay men. Go to Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Jason will be there today about 5 o'clock. No, man, you won't. <laughs> no, man, you won't. <laughs> but this guy's such a good catch, he won't be there. Oh, long. my gosh. Jason and I went to New York in uh, 2012 or 13. I can't remember. We had so much fun. Oh, my God. Remember the karaoke oh night? God. Oh my god! We were walking around Manhattan at like three in the morning, getting Drunk. sushi and like hanging out. I don't, honestly, I don't remember part of that trip. And then, oh, remember I got the hair. Remember I went and got the hair. Like uh, where was that? Oh, the, the, what was it? Clippings? Yes. And it yes. made it so long. Yes. And I was just, like, I was feeling I still myself. I have a picture of my phone from we were there. I was in the room, the hotel room, and I'm in my shorts. Oh, and yeah. no shirt, and I'm all posed up on the wall, <laughs> tramp stamp and all showing. Just... Uh, it's so funny because I remember one of my ex boyfriends found out that I was in New York thanks to social media, and he's like, "Oh, uh, tell Jason to leave so I can come to your room." I'm like, "No, like I'm not gonna demote myself from used to be your fiance to now I want to be your little." I mean, aren't you? I mean, don't you have a girlfriend? <laughs> so what you should have done is said, "Okay, I'll be in there. He's gone. Just the door will be just cracked. Come on in." I should have just left Jason in and there. And you be gone and leave Jason in there. No, yeah. Yeah. no <laughs> And Jason would have been on his interview skills. So first of all, before you're able to talk to Amber, um, let me ask you some questions first of all. Let me look you up. (laughs) Survey says. And you give him a little tray. um, And it's just going to be a little prick and get his blood. And like, we're testing everything. What's your credit score? What's your social security number? You know? But that was so much fun. And uh, man, we went up there. God, we walked around. Remember we got that character? Yes. Uh, you still have it. Somewhere. Somewhere. I'm sure. I mean, ugh, I'm sure there's a picture I've moved of my like 85 somewhere. times since then. Yeah. That was, but it kind of got like, I guess it was, because the way they did it with, it was like a, it wasn't chalk, but whatever they did it with, a pencil, kind of smeared yeah, in the thing. Yeah, it was really cool. But oh, I loved it because I remember I was like, my dream was always do business in New York by the time I was 40. We went up there around my 39th birthday. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? We had so much fun. We were there for almost a week. We got to, um, I was at a conference at the Matchmaker Institute in New York. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And I got to meet my friend Susan Alpers, match, millionaire matchmaker in Montreal, Canada. Man, shout out to her. She's hilarious. I really hated her at first because we were all sitting in the back room. Mm. Um, we were all sitting at tables in this conference. And she's very New York like rude and loud and don't give a damn if you like it and I'm, a, I'm like southern and polite and trying to be all Girl. this you know whatever I mean Girl. at least in business I mean <laughs> 
<laughs> Jason's like, quit lying. Um, he's like, you know, you're from the north side in the country, quit lying. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I can, I can, I can be professional. Um, but anyway, I was so shocked because, and we laugh about the story because we're sitting in the back of the conference at this round table, and she's sitting like two people over from me, and the people that they booked to speak. I don't know how they do it, but the people they had booked to speak were trash. I mean, they were just like boring. I'm like, hey, we're already established matchmakers and we already have major press. Tell us something, how to grow the business that's not what we already know. You know what I mean? Hell, y'all should have us speaking. I mean, seriously, because we both were on TV and radio. Like, we don't, what are you going to tell us, you know? And I remember uh, <laughs> Susan started, what is this? I mean, loud. In this conference, I was oh, so embarrassed. God, yes. She's like, "What is this? What did I pay? Because you had to pay like four or five thousand dollars to do this conference. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. And it was like, what are we getting for our money? This is trash. This is terrible. And I'm like, literally looking at her, like, shut the hell up. Like, I was so embarrassed for her. I'm like, okay, this is not how you do it. Like, if you have a complaint, go talk to the people after. You know what I mean, professionally. But she is in the back, she, loud oh, talking. She, was like, she didn't give a damn. Everybody know how she felt. <laughs> What she was thinking. <laughs> she let them know how the cow eat the to the mother. Everybody. <laughs> let them know. It was so funny. I was so offended. I was like, oh, my God, that is so rude. Like, I mean, yes, she was right. But then the more she talked, the more I was like, well, you know, that's true. This does suck. These are, we, you know, and it was so funny because after we took a break in the day and she's like, I know you probably hate me. I know you probably don't like because I was looking at her like, shut up, bitch. Like I was literally looking. My face has <laughs> no poker face. You know what I mean? I'm like. Hold on, let me show my. Let me get. Let me give you all the stank face. I'm. I'm looking at her like this, like. Like really, you're like really doing this in the middle of a conference, like loud talking in the back. But then it was so funny because I, I had to agree with her. We got scammed out of that money. It was trash. You know what I mean? And so we were like, all right. So then we we had so much fun from there. We yeah, hung out a lot during we had that. had a great trip otherwise. It was fun. It was, I mean, the whole point of us going was for the conference, which totally turned out to suck. But we I made a new friend out of it. Jason and I had a blast. So it was fun. We One have of my a, life goals was I wanted a piece of New York pizza. Yes. I got a piece of pizza and a a canned coke for like two bucks. I was so excited. Didn't you disappear was for a while? Was that 1942? Yes, yes I, I just remembered that Jason disappeared for a while. Because mm. of Grinder. Oh, is that where you that, were? Uh, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't tell me all the yes. little dirty details of uh, the New York trip. What? Because yep. you did get on the plane coming back looking kind of happy. I mean, Oh, uh, so you got some friends in New York is what you're telling me. I didn't make friends. Oh, do you have another name? Uh, no. <laughs> that, that was 10 years ago. Irrelevant. I, I no, but that's how online that. dating is. Like, you literally, and, and dating in today's world, like, literally, if you're at a bar, it could even be at a bar, and you're like, oh, you're cute, you want to go to the bathroom? Here. You know what I mean? It's like a hookup. It, we're in a hookup culture. But living is that in what they're doing in there? Yes, that's why it takes so long to get in line. Oh my but the god! Ba- but that's but you know that's a special kind of hell to live in a hookup culture when you're hopeless romantic like me. Yeah, I don't I want agree. that kind of relation. Maybe it was look. We've all had our hookups, but it, it it's just you get to an age, I think, and a time and a place where you just kind of grow that. I mean, you can only do that so long. Actually, no. Yes, yes, because. I love someone, uh, but I never want to get married ever. Okay. So, what about having a partner? What is it together? about it that makes you just so turned off to the idea of marriage? Um, I don't know. I guess because, like you said, we don't see marriages last, and you why date? Why get married if you're just dating and it's not? Yeah. Once you label it, everything changes. When you label it, it changes. But you get more benefits. Like, you know, I look at it like this. Like, what if somebody gets sick? Then you are the person that can make the medical decisions about them. What if somebody dies and they're rich and you get their money? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But what if... But what if... she said that. I'm kidding. But what if you have... But, like, there's, there's benefits to being married. You can add people to your insurance. I'm just saying, like, the benefits of being married. And then I just... For me, like, if something happened to my partner... And they were like medically unconscious. They they couldn't make a decision for themselves. The thing that would break my heart is to go to the hospital. And they're like, oh, well, are you his family? 
Well, yeah, but I mean, legally. I feel like if I was going to be with somebody and knew that they, I would be with them and didn't want to get married, there would be a power of attorney. Just that's good. Yeah, that that was smart. I mean, there's ways to avoid that. Yeah, You're right. There's always legal ways around it, but once you label it with a marriage, I it things change. I have a few friends that they've been married yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, and they're great. I, it just doesn't. Doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. What do you hear as feedback, like, with your single friends? Like, do you feel that they want love, or are they just literally just... I think a lot of people that say they don't want love are just hurt. And they just really don't want to get hurt again as much. It's not they don't want love, they don't want to get hurt. I would agree with that 100%, that in most cases, when you have somebody who has finally just thrown the towel in, and said, I don't want to be married. I don't want to be a life partner. I don't want to live together. It's because they're tired of, you know. Dealing with the yeah. crap out there. Dealing yeah. with the crap of the people that are out there in the dating world. I mean, it, it's it's it, dog eat dog out there. There are, people are not all conscious. And there's a lot of crappy shit going on. How do y'all, how do y'all feel that music has influenced the culture in dating? Because I, I listen to the music and it's like, it's it's been for years and it, I, hell i'll go all yeah. the way back to beyonce and destiny's child that's the one i remember hearing i remember this song is if you pimp him i congratulate you and it's basically saying that you know we've as women we've become like men in every sense of the word um but the music and it, and especially in rap it's a wife i got a wife a, a side piece a girlfriend a and baby three mama, other, and three on the side and and three applicants you know yeah, what i'm saying like, so do th- how do you think I, music has affected date, the dating world i don't i mean you're talking about you hearing the women's music but women are just now being able to really talk about it and be about mm-hmm. it when we've heard it for years and years from the male artists so exactly. i mean exactly Empowerment. What do you think about WAP being the number one song in the whole world for like eight or nine weeks straight? What's it called? WAP. WAP. Wet ass. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Um, yes. What? You had heard that song, Eric? No. I mean. <sighs> oh my God! Are you kidding? I, me? I'm kind of jealous that I can't do the dance like everybody else does. What? I tried to do the busted challenge. So the I'm going to go back I to answering the question real quick because I feel up. like I just slid us down a slippery slope. Yeah. That's okay. And I, I just want to say that I think a lot of the music has has created this illusion of of lowering the value of relationships, monogamy, uh, marriage, and and maybe added to the influence of folks that treat people in ways that make people not want to be in a relationship. I mean. I've been there. I would, you know, I'm ultimately I want a life partner, and I've been there ma- uh, multiple times where I'm like, oh my god, I don't want it. <laughs> Single feels great. I'm hoping that this is and the it clean was version. back to what you said earlier. It was because the, you know at the time I was hurt and and on some level became jaded. You've never heard walk like for real. Maybe I have and didn't listen to the words. All right, I'm just gonna play just the intro so you can kind of hear the noise. Walls in this house. Quite a few times. It's on every third car that drives down the street in my neighborhood. Every second bicycle and every skateboard is listening to this song. Beat it up, baby, catch a charge. Extra large and it's so hard. Put this cookie right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top. I wanna ride. I do a kegel. I'm kind of wild. Look at my mouth. Look at my thighs. Sweat is wet. Come take a dive. Tie me up. I'm surprised, let's role play, I wear the disguise I want you to park that Big Mac truck right in this little garage Make me dream, make a stream I don't put it, make a scene I don't cook, it's, it's, I don't it's clean But let me tell you, I got the string Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me Quit yeah. jump out, but you let it get inside of me I tell them where to put it, never tell them where I'm gonna be I'm run down on the bar, have a nice run in me Talk to your pal, fight your lip Ask for a car while you ride that dick Why you really ain't never got a point for a thing He already made his mind up before he came Now get your boots Hang your coat for this wet, wet, wet. He bought a phone just for pictures of this wet, wet, wet. Pay my tuition <laughs> just to kiss me on this wet, wet, wet. Now make it rain if you want to see some wet, wet, wet. Look, I need a hard hit. I need a deep. I need a handy drink. I need a wet. 
smoke. Not a garnish, nigga. I need a king cobra with a hook in it. Hope it lead over. He got some money, then that's what I'm gonna this song. Kid one, just like it's credit. 832743 Jam. You wanna get your comment? Do you think Waffle like a man? I wanna, 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 I
you're going to think everybody's judging. Yeah. I mean, being with someone in a wheelchair kind of puts some obstacles in the way. You know, my favorite meme I've ever seen, Jason, was this couple. They were both models in college. And it was like a split screen. And in one picture, they were like, you know, on the spray carpet, looking all beautiful. And then split screen, her face, she had been in a fire. Have you seen oh, that one? Oh, yes, yes, Her face yes. was like melted, like down. You know yeah. what I mean? But you know what? He was, he literally had her on his arm like, yeah, that's my baby. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so wait, wait, like with that though, they were together before. Getting together with somebody that you've never known and you've never experienced me experience being with somebody in a chair. Yeah. It, it's it's an adjustment for sure. But see, it should see that's where and that's where I have a problem with people that are conditional with that kind of thing. You know, because I understand that it's it will be definitely a different change from what you're used to. But at the same time, how does that have anything to do with your heart, your mind, what you could bring to the relationship? Who cares? I mean, like, and I guess some people do, but that's, we had on uh, Mr. Reverse It earlier in the week, and he was literally talking about how if he is, he's, he was trying to break down the difference between dating and marriage. He said the difference to him is if he's married and you get cancer, you get sick, you wind up in a wheelchair, then he would stay with you. But if all those things happen to you before and you're just dating, he would bounce. And I'm like, that's crazy to me because that's the whole point to me is to see is to what's the purpose of com like how are you dating committed like if you're we're dating we're committed and yeah we're not married but if something happens to me you would leave but no see that that's again that's different but i get it because it already happened it, 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 you're not with so for example if i try to date somebody now um it's it's an experience and yeah People aren't used to it, but if you're with somebody and then th it happens, you process it together at the same time. But it's a it's a big it's a big thing. No, I'm not taking away from that. I agree. I just you know my thing is like it 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 shouldn't be a consideration to me because it doesn't affect the important thing about you, which is your heart. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean like for me. Uh, my first two years, I was very, uh, very self-conscious. I, I didn't feel attractive, and then something happened, and... I mean, you know you're beautiful, so, like, I mean, of course, I mean, like, what do you mean I feel attractive? You just feel different? Like, it's just a different confidence you have yeah, to gain. Yeah, I, I just felt like I was, I wasn't an equal. And then something happened, mm -hmm. and um, you snap back to remembering who the hell you are. That's what happened. Still, I got a groove back. Okay. That's all it was. I mean, well, you're looking gorgeous as usual. I mean, people are like, oh gosh, oh he's saying, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, DJ Houston, DJ Houston. I've been trying to turn him for weeks, but he's not. He's not budging. But anyway, so you know, Jason is our spotlight single of the week this week, guys. And if you want to meet Jason. Holler at your girl, and we will play a little matchmaking. Jason will be back. Yes, we will. Yes, I will. Jason will be back in studio next Thursday because our show got started late today. So we're going to bring him back in again next week, and we're going to delve more into life and the future and maybe even do some work together again, you know, because I think it's just timing with everything. But are, what are your deal breakers? That's the main thing I want to ask you today. What are deal breakers when you're considering somebody for a relationship? Oh, oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I like off the like, what is like no? Oh, hygiene. Oh, see, that's ooh, amen. hygiene. That's instant. It's just yeah. it's crazy how you have to tell people that. Like that's that's what's crazy to me. Like you don't know that. My mama didn't teach you to bathe. You didn't wear know deodorant, <laughs> brush your teeth. <laughs> Fix your hair. It's crazy how you have to tell people sometimes, go brush your teeth. Go. To, I had an ex like that. I'm like, go brush your teeth. This is when I was in college. I'm like, go brush your teeth. Take a shower. We're, you don't even come close to me. You know, and he, he just is like, I'm like, dude, you didn't even learn this when you were growing up. This is basic stuff. Okay, so hygiene is the number one deal breaker. What else? What else can you think of that's like, no, of people you've met? Family. Family. Ooh. Family. I... I have a very close relationship with my family, and 
it's just I, I feel like that's a thing that you have to have a good family relationship it's so true and we, be okay with me having a good family relationship because yeah my mother and I talk every day for at least 45 minutes oh that's good I mean that's really good yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. Now, because there are people that are super, and that's the thing. When you start dating somebody, I'm like you. That's one of the first things I want to delve into. I want to kind of know your whole dynamic. Because at the age I'm at, like, Ooh. my kids are grown. I have no drama. Like, I'm, you know, live alone. I mean, I'm, like, doing my own thing. I have my own life. So if you're at that stage where you still have, like, drama with, like, baby mamas, baby daddies, that kind of situation, or your mom is not going to accept me, uh, I'm too old to deal with what your mom thinks. And don't honestly. ask my family history. We mm. don't talk about that. That yeah. is not in the past. Yeah, well, that's good. That's where to leave it. But that's the problem. So many people live in the past, and I think that I think that's really good that you put those boundaries around your family because so many times people will sell out everything that they believe in or want for somebody that enters their life that may or may not be there tomorrow but you got to stand true to what is important to you okay so we're talking to jason sims our spotlight single today so we're talking about his top three deal breakers number one is hygiene if you stink keep it moving okay number two if you have a if you're in a dysfunctional family situation you're probably not right for jason because he is it has a healthy relationship with his mom and family and he is looking for somebody that is healed and not toxic and not full of drama yeah. What's the third thing? What's your like number three? Like when you really think about like what really matters to you, what is a hell no? Ooh. I don't know. I, I guess I've never really thought about where or what it is. Yeah, single. Like maybe would that be one? Like the relationship status. Oh, and it, it can't be fresh out of. They can't be fresh out of a relationship. Okay. I am nobody's rebound. Uh, exactly. That's what. See, that's it. And it's funny you don't really know. We all know what our hell knows are when we see it, but to articulate it can be a little challenging when you're put on the spot like that. Eric, what are your top three deal breakers in a relationship and when you're looking for a mate? Because Eric is also single, so if y'all want to meet Eric as well, holly at your girl. I'm going to start sending out invoices soon, I'm telling you. Lying is oh. probably my number one deal breaker. Yes, 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 yes. Um, just, you know, tell me the truth. You know, hurt me honestly, but don't hurt me by lying. Nice. If, if hurting is is in the formula and um if you can be honest about it i'll probably be your friend for life see you know I'm for, a... honesty is the foundation of friendship for life and i actually have a plethora of lifelong friends um some of which i you know i just lost a couple people in the last couple of years from when i was two and a half or three years old in my life wow lifelong friends yeah and and stayed in contact not haven't talked to in 20 years um that's number one number two i think is being really judgmental oh i can't you know, stand it's one thing to evaluate people. something There's and say name. hey you know that is not okay in my space yeah but if you're gonna slam somebody around for what whatever their belief system is you know i, I think like i'm gonna put that in tangent with bullying you know, I don't mm -hmm. like bullying and I don't like judgment. Um, as far as that, the third thing is um, I've, I've not really had an issue. I can't, I mean, I guess hygiene would be an issue, but I've never had that as an issue with somebody I dated. Yeah. So maybe subconsciously it was, it was already, you know. I would think for you something more important than hygiene would be your spiritual views because you're a shaman. I mean... <laughs> You don't get much more spiritual than that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, like, yeah, and I like that you're open means, right. and you accept everybody and you're not judgmental and you give everybody the place to understand that really, you know, they think love, love is actually a verb. It's not a word. It's something you do, you know? And I think that if you're, no matter what you believe, do you think that you being judgmental and negative is going to really persuade that person to see your views? Or do you think you being loving and kind will go, you know what? Well, if that's what you believe and that's what people like you are, well, then maybe I'll listen to you. But if you don't give anybody a chance, then you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like people are yeah, just, for sure. so I think it's like you're prejudging and who the hell are you to judge? I mean, let's go look in your closet and your skeletons because we know you have some, okay? Everybody does. So 
I just think that people are judgmental. So, okay, so definitely. So number three would be yeah, spiritual values. Spiritual values. values. Yeah, overall. What do you guys think about dating different religions? Because that's one thing in matchmaking I always ask and always talk about is what are your religious beliefs? And then would you date somebody that differs from you? I don't really have religious beliefs for the most part. Okay. So, like, whatever they do is what they do. I, I'm not going to knock it. Yeah. Would you try it? I mean, why not? Yeah. Okay. So you're open like a, yeah. like a blank canvas. Yeah. You're just kind of like open. And I love that because that's the one thing people are, because, because it ties into your political views because what are, what are politics? Politics are what you believe in your morals and your values. I mean, oh, when you really think about it, for sure. so where you can be open to religion, can you be open politically? But no. No. Oh, no. yes, that's a hard no. No. Um, politics, that they're, no. That, mm -hmm, just plain mm -hmm. no. There's no, I There's no gray. I, I can see more on, I just can't. You can speak freely, honey. No leftists, none. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. None, I, I can't. Oh, interesting. I've always considered myself independent because I don't really yeah, believe in yeah. politics at all. Like, I think it's an illusion to make us all fight so that, that none of us figure out who the real bullies are in this world. It's the, you know what I mean? This, yeah, is, really. this is not black or white. This is not straight or gay. This is not Republican or Democrat. This is rich versus poor, period, point blank. To me, that's... The haves, the haves a lot and the have mores. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think, Eric? What about politics for you? How does that affect you in a relationship? So um, I'm going to go with religion and politics mm -hmm. and say that there have been a few candidates in my lifetime where they have done things that I will not judge, but I will evaluate. Yeah. It's so far beyond my my the space I live in yeah. morally and ethically that I would not support that candidate. And... It could be that if somebody was a devout supporter of that candidate, that I would ask them, how can you support this candidate with these values? Right. And if they were like, oh, no problem, it's just okay, then I would question their values. Yeah. Yeah. That... You know, and, and the monkey see, monkey do, you get a bunch of people all on a wagon and they, they fall off a turnip truck kind of thing. Um, so... As far as religion goes, as long as their religion was not um, crossing my value system, and, and I have not, I mean, I've dated women from multiple religions, and as long as they didn't create an issue because of their religion and my belief system, I was not interested in creating an issue over it either. And even is if that I didn't, because you're not, see, my consideration with the, the religion is what do you teach your kids? Because so, you're not okay. really trying to have kids, so maybe right. that's a little easier. Well, actually, though, so when I was a kid, I was raised both Jewish and Irish Catholic. Interesting. Wow. And, How extreme. Yeah, and I went to both services, and my, all my family said to me, your mother is Jewish, so by birthright, you are Jewish. That's but true. But we're raising you under both houses of God, and we will want you to make a choice where you go religiously when you are older. That's so interesting. All, both sides of the family said that. And they both would tell me the good sides of their religion. Yeah. But also they reminded me that I would make a choice when I was older. And for me, I did stick with Judaism. But strangely enough, I go to churches and temples. And I go to any religious service pretty much that I'm ever invited to. I've spoken in temples and churches around the world. And I, I can say one thing. Every religion I've ever visited spoken at their facility or gone to services of had one thing in common there was always one common denominator god one of my teachers about 20 years ago told me there were over 45,000 religions in the world at that time he was a minister i actually went and became a minister back then and actually before that and when we were talking about there being 45,000 religions wow. in the world, we just laughed and giggled and said, yeah, and a lot of them tell you if it's not their way, it's the highway to hell. And you know what? God's just not that judgmental. It's not about hellfire and brimstone. If you are right with yourself and your heart and soul, 
divinely connected to God and your choices are healthy and there winds up being a hell, which I don't believe in, down the road, you're not going there. You know, even the Pope came out, I don't know, 15 or 18, 20 years ago and said, there is no hell as we were raised to believe. And but how does he know? See, that's my whole thing with religion. Well, and any of the 45,000 religions that are out there. I can answer that question. Okay. So if you study ancient Aramaic mm-hmm. and you go back to the uh, the original Testament, I won't say the Old Testament because the, old, the first Testament is the Torah or the Tanakh, which is the book of religion for Jewish folks. The Bible is the second testament. The original testament. And if talks you're Mormon, there's hell. a third, I guess. <laughs> right. The the original Torah or Bible talks about hell. And in ancient Aramaic, if you translate it all the way back, it's Hades. It is City. a garbage dump outside of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And if you were poor and could not be afford to be put in the catacomb rocks for a year for your your flesh to desiccate and your bones to either be given back in an urn or crushed in the the powder given back to your family you would be wrapped in a cotton shroud and tossed into the fires of hell which was a garbage dump that burned 24 hours a day outside of Jerusalem. And I I, I know that that's a fact. I've I've learned that as well. It's interesting to me. All I'm saying is I, I, you know, I was raised Southern Baptist and we were all going to hell. Southern Baptist. All the time. And I was in the church every time the doors open. Um, And I love church. I love, I love singing in church. I love, I like gospel music. Probably is my number one genre. I love all music, but I love gospel music because I feel like I get more worship out of that than any other. Or preacher or somebody talking to me but the thing is is that I remember when I was 18 um, my grandmother we had a Catholic family that lived next door and somebody had passed away and the whole family was over there praying for a soul now if you're if you're a raised Baptist Methodist Catholic well not Catholic or uh, Church of Christ um, Mormon they believe that you that um, if you're not saved it, you know through Jesus that you're gonna go to hell well, Catholics believe in Jesus. They just don't believe in being saved. It's more of how you live and confession right. and repentance. But it was so interesting. I remember I was like, Mama, what are all those people doing mm-hmm. over next door? And she was like, oh, they're praying for his soul because he was Catholic and he wasn't saved. And I, and I remember thinking to myself, so you're telling me because he wasn't our religion, he's going to go to hell? And I just remember having that thought, like, I said, Mama, what about people in the remote corner of the world in the jungle that's never heard the gospel? And doesn't know about heaven. And she said, Jesus promised that he would not return until the gospel spread in all four corners of the earth, which has now been done through television, right? Right. So the point is, is that it is, to me, it's more offensive if anyone is adamant about anything. Because at the end of the day, we don't, none of, unless you've died and had a near death experience, I love watching near death experiences because to me, that is more of an indication of the truth. Because when people, you know, some people are probably making it up, but there are people, and you can tell through your, your own discernment, okay, that's a quack job. They're making that up for attention. 